Well, I am very excited about this next conversation that we're hosting in partnership with Open Society Foundations. I would love to welcome to the stage Susana Malcora, who is the co-founder and president of GWL Voices, and Anissa Tamori, who is the head of policy at United Nations Association. Thank you both. So we are going to talk about what is <laughs> kind of one of these ironies of our sector, where we promote a lot of gender equality worldwide, yet the institutions do that promotion don't necessarily reflect that reality, don't necessarily practice what we preach. And what we want to talk a bit is about ending that hypocrisy and bringing more transparency and gender balance to UN leadership. I'm happy we had two uh, UN leaders, uh, women leaders speaking here today, but sadly that isn't always the case. And Susanna, your organization, GWL Voices, is an advocacy group for gender equality within the multilaterals. Um, you know, I think we know generally that it's a pretty male-dominated space. Often you just look at photos and you see that, but could you, you know, break down the data on what it actually looks like? Of course. Thank you. And thank you for, for having me here. We are a group of women leaders. That's our name. Uh, close to 70. Uh, all of us come from the multilateral system at large, having served in very senior positions. Founders uh, were myself, together with Helen Clark, who will be here shortly, and Irina Bokova. And we, our w piece of work is around the strengthening of the multilateral system and the empowerment of women and the rights of women within that realm. And of course, a subtext of that is women in the multilateral system. So we have a flagship report uh, coming out in March that showed that since its inception in 1945, 33 of the largest institutions of the multilateral system have had only 12% of the time a woman at the helm. It shows that 13 of them never had a woman, five only had a woman once, most of them had women on certain areas, but for example, the financial institutions, the financial, the regional financial develop and development banks never had a woman at the helm. So clearly it's a male dominated world, clearly it's geared towards certain areas where women maybe are good enough to be there, but uh, it's far from, from fair. But it's also true that this doesn't apply only to the, to the secretariats, the organizations. It also applies to member states. Mm -hmm. And for example, in the case of the General Assembly, which is a very important body in all of this, uh, only four women were presidents out of 78. Mm -hmm. So we are, for example, in that case, promoting the notion of gender alternation at the presidency of the General Assembly to show at least that there are, we, we talk we don't talk, we, we really mean what we say. And what do you think are the real implications of that, right? And it's not just a fairness question, but how is that leading to us not being, like we're halfway to the SDGs, not anywhere close to making it. How do you think this is contributing to that problem and how it could help um, help if we had more equality within these institutions? Well, first of all, it means that we should walk the walk, not talk the talk, you know? I mean, we are not in the talk show business, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, the second I kind of am, but yeah. the second thing is <laughs> the second thing is that women bring a different perspective. That's absolutely. It's not a matter of justice. If it's not a matter of right, which it is. But when you have a world that has become as complicated as the world is today, when the tensions among member states among countries are so huge. When you need to have a, a different a perspective brought to the table, a more nuanced approach to, to certain issues, women are needed. That's what we bring. We thanks, thanks God, in my view, men and women are different. Mm -hmm. So we need that diversity and we need the diversity at the very top level, but we need it in the whole of the teams, not only leadership teams, but the whole of the institutions, so that we really come with solutions that are different and hopefully will bring a better future. And Anissa, the UN Association, you are in a unique position where you are outside of the UN system, so you can write some, I guess, constructive criticism. <laughs> 
And so I'd love to hear, you have this uh, initiative, um, Blue Smoke, where you are trying to bring more transparency to the hiring process. Could you talk a little bit about what are some of the real barriers and how some of this selection happens and what you're trying to do with your initiative? Yeah, absolutely. And really thank you for having us here to talk about this issue. It's not something that sees the light of day a lot, but you know, initiatives like the report that GWL um, and others are, are, are writing is really showing that there's some momentum here to, to really look at that. Um, and what we find is that, you know, this is a really widespread issue. It's not just a, a gender issue. It's a, a power issue that the P5 have monop monopolies on these processes. And these processes, are, they're murky, they're inconsistent, and they are deeply political. And at a time when we have so much... <laughs> I'm ringing the alarm on the issue. Yes, uh, this right. is a very right. hot issue. <laughs> very hot oh. issue. Oh. Let's see. Hopefully, we can get that resolved here quickly. <laughs> Yesterday's elevator, today, fire alarm. So, you know. You know, the, the job of UN reform is not easy. Right, it is. It's not simple. <laughs> That's uh, right. <laughs> Well, let me, I just want to make sure we're not actually in any danger while we keep everyone up here. Maybe you can give me a, a signal. Yeah, just stay, stand by just a moment. It is a nice little effect to the importance of the topic. Well, maybe if you I feel like you can, just yeah, keep going, maybe you just you know, keep, keep on going. We, we, you know, from civil society, we're used to kind of keeping going <laughs> right. against the odds, against the alarms. You know, it's it's our jam. Um, but now I forgot your question. But yeah, UNA UK, we have this. Well, about about blue smoke and the blue smoke yeah. exactly. So blue smoke was a working. Is a working Luckily, I don't think there's actual smoke here. But yes, thank you. All. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a smoke. Alarm, <laughs> yeah, right. right. So blue smoke is a, a working group that was formed at the end of 2022 um, between UNA UK, Plataforma Sipo, and Strategy for Humanity. And the aim of this initiative is really to shine a light on the extent of the issues and the shortcomings in appointment processes mm -hmm. um, and really become the most comprehensive source um, when it comes to painting the full picture of this issue because we've been working in this space for a long time. We have many partners who, when it comes to a senior appointment for, say, uh, humanitarian affairs, maybe then they'll shine a light on that issue. But we see this happening all the time and we really wanted to paint that comprehensive picture because I think once you start painting that picture, um, it's really outrageous. It's outrageous that, uh, you know, we've, we've heard the stats when it comes to the lack of female representation, but, you know, there is a whole pool of global talent that is being missed out on by maintaining the power of the P5 when it comes to these monopolies. And we have some props. So we made some monopoly cards that kind of shows <laughs> that, you know, it's in, in our opinion, why should you be a, why should only British people hold the post of um, coordinating humanitarian affairs. Why do you, why should only French men be leading peacekeeping? You know, it's something that really under, undermines the legitimacy and the effectiveness of the UN, and we really are seeking to change that. So yeah, we created a website. Um, we put out reports that look at appointment processes in certain particular departments, um, and we also have a monthly newsletter that we publish with um, our partners at Pass Blue. And what has been the response from members of the UN? Receptive, <laughs> resistant? I mean, it, the response has been incredible. So, you know, I think that actually it, it's really gratifying to understand that we're not speaking to avoid and that this is an issue that uh, concerns many people. Um, and there is a deep, deep dissatisfaction. And we've, we found from diplomats, the diplomats have told us, uh, especially from small and medium states, and I would say that that's where that there, there is potential here. That's where we can overcome the barriers is by really giving a voice to small and medium states to overcome the power of the P5 when it comes to this issue. Because, you know, the P5, there is consensus among the P5 when it comes to this issue. And, and in a time where it seems consensus is very hard to find, um, they really band together when it comes to maintaining um, their monopolies. But so diplomats tell us, you know, we didn't even know we were looking for that information. We come to your website, we, we, we find things we didn't know we needed. Um, we, we have tips from UN staffers. You know, we often ask the UN directly really simple questions like what is the start date of a, a certain post? When is the end date? When can we expect a renewal date? Questions that are of public interest 
for these international civil servants and we get stonewalled. So we have UN staffers emailing us. They tell us, they, they give us that information when other official routes won't. And, and, and especially the response from civil society colleagues has been, has been great. And we're actually going to be shortly releasing a set of principles, which we, we hope that the SG and member states will take on board. And we have over 40 um, colleagues that have signed up to that. And hopefully others here will too soon. Right. And, you know, you mentioned that this is not often discussed or talked about, doesn't get the the prominence maybe that it should in this week of lots of different discussions, probably because it's, it tends to be male-driven <laughs> discussions. Um, but just very quickly in our final minute here, what would each of you like our audience, either here in person or online, um, to do or think about how they can contribute to this? Suzanne, I'll start with you. Well, first of all, put pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, there are there are very significant appointments coming. I mean, the Secretary General's renew, not renewal, a, a new appointment will come in, in, in the next three years. So we need a woman. That's what we said when we were hitting <laughs> 70, right, the yeah. 70th anniversary. Remember, last time it was a one, seven billion, one for seven billion campaign. Now it's one for eight billion campaign. Let's hope that we don't have to get to the one for 10 billion campaign mm -hmm. before it happens. So we need to raise the, the profile, we need to raise the awareness, and we need to put pressure. And that, is, again, is the reason why we are trying to get the General Assembly to establish a, an alternation in gender in the presidency of the General Assembly, because that will be a symbolic, very symbolic move that will mean a lot and will make many people, many women in particular, believe again that maybe the UN system is trustworthy. Mm -hmm. And Anissa? I mean, it's hard to follow that, but yes, absolutely. The next SG must be a woman. Um, and, and, and like I said, sign up to our newsletter, get involved. And, and really the, the strength of our institutions depends on this degree of scrutiny. And, you know, civil society, we're always told if you make things more transparent, if you make them more, more open, you'll, you'll politicize things further it can't get any more political than it already is. Right. Well, thanks to both of you and to Open Societies Foundations for allowing us, I guess, to, to ring the blue smoke alarm here today. <laughs> Pun very much intended. Um, but thank you both. And this is a topic that we will also be covering at DevX as we have been. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right.